Hey everybody, so I just got back from good old Manhattan. It was quite a crazy trip. I had a case of staph infection on my shoulder and my muscle. It's not fun for most of the trip. I went to Occupy DC, lots of cool stuff. I have a couple new nifty cameras to work with, both HD. Uh, here it's just been delivering me beautiful things. Anyways, uh, there's a lot of footage from the trip I have to go through and edit it. It'll take a while, so we're going to put a video together and some good stuff. Anyways, I wanted to show you something I was working on on the trip uh, about fractal geometry. Alright, and so we have a, here in the red, this dashed red, okay, is your common triple helix. And what I was showing before in other videos is the polarization at the outer points, centrifugal force is applied, J, I, and um, A in this, and there would be, uh, if those were negative charges, there would be positive charges here, and then negative charges here. So now what I'm showing is showing the, um, the flow around these points, and so if you call those electrical points, um, or electrical charges, you'd have a magnetic field rotating around them. And so, uh, if this magnetic field, if, if these three negative charges, um, they'd be rotating, let's say, uh, counterclockwise, all right? So imagine these as three gears rotating this way. Well, then the positive charges would be rotating clockwise this way, all right? Then you need to have negative charges rotating counterclockwise this way. All right, so you're seeing a preservation in this fractal geometry, this system right here. You're seeing a preservation of the angular information, 30 degrees between the negative charge and the positive charges. And so the out dashed red is the actual helical geometry, say your conductors, um, which I'm making out of copper, copper tubing. Um, but the black is the magnetic fields around them. And so, uh, this in the center, this would keep getting smaller um, forever. And so you're seeing a preservation of the angular information between the electric charges of 30 degrees. And you're also seeing a preservation of the ratio decrease in the magnetic fields, um, which this one is based on, I believe, 3.75. Yeah. There's a ratio, 3.75, and uh, which is 15 over um, uh, 15 over 4 is the ratio. And so we're seeing a preservation of the angular information at 30 degrees, and that each of these um, the di the uh, diameter of each of these circles decreases uh, by uh, 3.75 with each step perpetually and so you see a compression of the electric and magnetic field um, toward a singularity in the core. Now we're going to go to a quad helix. All right. Now in the quad helix you have your helical geometry which are the four circles spiraling together and helical geometry polarization points which is here on the outside um, the intersection points between them, there, um, and then the innermost points on the quads, right there. All right. So if these are negative charges on the outside, these would be negative charges on the inside. These would be positive charges on the intersection points. Um, the angular information between the negative to the two positives is 45 degrees. From the positive to the two negatives is 45 degrees seeing a preservation of the electrical information 45 degrees and so this would keep fractalizing inwards getting smaller and smaller toward a singularity the magnetic fields the circles are decreasing a ratio of 2.414 which is the square root of 2 plus 1 um, is that ratio and so is are showing that the helical geometries have these fractal geometries that all compress toward a singularity so I really was only working on the triple helix and quad helix. I played with the pentagonal helix. Yeah, this. I didn't 
tone up the image as much. Um, and so this is just showing the magnetic field on how the, um, the pentagonal geometry laid out. However, the ratio is not as smooth. It's 1.96. I didn't fine tune this ratio. This one hasn't been fine tuned. Um, one thing I was thinking is the, the dodecagram. And the dodecagram, if you go in the vortex space, you can see the matrix I have for the dodecagram. This is a single circuit rotating coil. It's a 12 by a 3 matrix. And so A connects to B, connects to C, connects to D. And um, it gives you the information for the energy flows in it, which flows a lot. Flows the exact same energy. Like this one, just like this one. Um, except ignore the polarizations on the inside. And if this was a dodecagram, you'd have two and two on the outside. Um, it has two two pulses in it, or two oscillations, depending on how you interpret the oscillations. And what that would make is the dodecagram, a cutaway of it is it's it's a pentagonal helix spun around. And so the uh, an interesting thing about it, which I've stayed, is the ratio this ratio from here to here, from here to the core, um, that ratio is the same as the ratio of a pentagonal helix in that you could put five circles around this circle almost perfectly between it. So you're seeing a fractal image of this vertical and then the if you cut away the side view of that torus it would be a fractal image of this pentagonal structure. However, the according to this matrix found in the math, it's not it's not like the octogram, it's not like the hexagram, in that you have a distribution evenly on the outside. And so in a octogram, the distribution of charges is even on the outside. One, two, three. And so one end of the octogram has three charges and the other end of the octogram has three opposing charges spinning around each other. Alright, so it's easy to understand that information, interpret it. However, with the pentagonal, it's not five charges distributed in the dodecagram. It's not five spinning on one side and five spinning on the other side. Uh, there's no, there's not five oscillations occurring in the dodecagram. There's two oscillations occurring in the dodecagram according to this matrix. And so, if that's the case, then if you have in your pentagonal helix one way to look at the charge information more is it looks uh, more like this. It looks something more like that in terms of the distribution of the energy. And going around the whole helix, that information would be changing. Um, it's, 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 not, it's not congruent, because also I'm looking at that cutaway information, we're looking only at the two extremes. Um, and uh, that information would change going around the whole torus for the triple helix and the double helix. Um, but this image right here, um, to whom I'm saying these are the negative charges, this is for the extreme in the triple helix, one polarity. So there's two polarities of this in the octogram, but there's also dif differing information of this information around in between those two points. And the pentagonal helix is constantly changing in regards to all five being different, but there's uh, polarities between the two. There's, a, there's a sets of two um, with one, one changing. Um, or, or technically, are all five are changing. There's a lot of points where there's going to be polarity matches like this, where there's going to be two, two, and one. Um, but the magnetic fields are all, all, all going to be constantly shifting. So to actually get a 
2D cutaway of it in GeoGebra um, to conceptualize it is extremely hard. The dodecagram is something I'm actually more and more interested in lately. Uh, and uh, so that's a little tidbit on some fractal geometry that exists within the helixes and the fields they produce and uh, how you can access a zero point with this geometry and ideally use the the uh, the linear helical geometries with the cyclical geometries together in some form of symbiosis uh, is, is one thing I want to be experimenting with. I have a very act so I can start playing around with it. So there you go. Ciao everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye.